Holy City Center Radio is episode 262, and I am your host, Christian Sanger. Today is Wednesday, June 12th, 2024. Welcome to the midweek show of Holy City Center Radio. I so appreciate you all coming back. And let me tell you, we've got a special one today. It's an interview episode. You know, these are always interesting. I love talking to people around town about their stories, their projects. And I've been able to, to speak with a lot of really great people. Um, and today is no exception. Uh, this gentleman I've met several years ago. And when he found out I had the website, I, I think someone introduced me and said, talked about the site. Um, he's just, he's kept in touch here and there with me, letting me know about different things going on. Um, he has just been a really uh, super positive guy, always supporting Holy City Center. And, and I, you know, he's just been so kind over the years that uh, I'm glad I was finally able to have him on the show. Uh, I've shared his, some news on the website before, but never had an official interview. Uh, and I'm talking about Mr. Jonathan Mookie Morant. He is an incredible guy with an amazing story. He is, you know, before he got into this latest project, which involves, you know, writing, uh, he had quite the story and you can learn about that in his first book, um, which I'll talk to you about here in a moment. Um, but out, once he got his career going, uh, just amazing uh, people that he's worked with. And obviously he's working with these people because he himself is talented. Um, he got into the music scene he helped to be a songwriter. He was a record producer. Um, he can play multiple instruments. Uh, so he has that side of his life that includes, get this, this is crazy. Working with some of those artists, he has sold over 30 million records as a songwriter and record producer. That is big time numbers that you don't see a lot, especially anymore, you know, with the way the record industry is, but, uh, he's earned numerous gold and platinum certifications. Uh, the first time I met him was one of those, um, the Bay street beer garden was doing one of their theme brunches with DJ Natty heavy playing. And he had, uh, Jonathan come along with him and he brought one of his records. So it was cool to actually see one of the gold. I think it was gold. It might've been platinum records, um, that he had. And he, earned those awards and sold all those albums by working with artists like the Backstreet Boys, Genuine, Will Smith, Donnell Jones, and Sync, 98 Degrees, Justin Timberlake, and Queen Latifah, just to name a few. As if that wasn't enough, he also made contributions to soundtrack albums. Remember how movies would have soundtracks that you could buy the record and they were they would be very popular depending on the movie. A couple hit songs on there and people would be scooping it up. Well, he was on some big ones. He uh, made contributions to soundtracks for huge movies like The Men in Black, The Princess Diaries, Legally Blonde, and more. So just an impressive career. And we're barely going to even talk about all of that today. Why? Because he's now an author. And not only is he an author, he's an award-winning, best-selling author. Uh, his first book came out in January. It was called The Happy Has Been, A Memoir of Music in Life in Six Degrees. Uh, we'll, we'll get into it in the interview, so I don't, I'm not going to you know, expound on what the book is about. Um, but needless to say, it's done very well in, in just this handful of months that it's been out. You know how Amazon has several different charts. You know, they have like overall bestseller. They have, you know, best uh, of new releases, and then they can get into other, you know, subcategories, you know, like best book about sports, best book, et cetera, et cetera. So they have a lot of different types of charts. And this book has ended up at number one on many of them. And that's not even the main focus of today's interview. I mean, yes, we do talk about it quite a bit since I didn't interview him about it. And the book is still essentially in its infancy. I mean, it's only been out since January, but he just released another book. He wanted to get this out he talks about why he didn't want to wait a little bit longer. Also, it's a great Father's Day tie-in because his second book is called Letters to My Son, Roman, Love on the Spectrum. And both books are available for purchase right now. There'll be links in the show notes where you can go ahead and pick those up. That book already in pre-orders and then finally coming out you know, on Kindle, uh, he mentions in the interview, and then the paperback and hardback, it's already hit some number one categories as well. So just incredible story that he has. We lightly touch on his life in general, but the main focus will be about the newest book. And I encourage you, as always, to visit the link in the show notes where you can find out more about his incredible life. You can purchase the books and see what else he's working on. And for those of you in the Charleston area, 
which I would imagine is the vast majority of people listening. Uh, he does play gigs around town still, um, so you can get information on his website to see if you want to see him perform. Because um, obviously, as I said at the top, he's a very accomplished musician as well. So without any further delay, let's get into this interview with Jonathan Mookie Moran. And as promised, joining me now is today's guest. That is Jonathan Mookie Morant. So excited to talk to this gentleman. We haven't connected uh, in person or, or, you know, talking like this in a while, but we do talk through social media or emails and things. So glad to finally have you on the show and to talk about everything you've been working on. It is my pleasure, Christian. Um, I have a son named Christian, by the way, so. That's right. Yeah. A musician as well, right? Yeah. He's a, he's a great dude, but I'm, it's exciting to be here. By the way, congratulations on your, what is it like a hundredth Charleston city paper award? <laughs> I'm a newbie. There. <laughs> Goodness, congratulations, it. man. You're awesome. Yeah. I'm new to the, I'm new to it, but I'm very grateful. I can't even believe that, uh, I actually won. <laughs> I know. That's good. Yeah, Congratulations yeah. to you. I was about yeah, to say the same. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. So before we dive into um, this newest book that you have coming out, I, I want to mm-hmm. talk about the first book, of course, but also even before that, just for those who may not know who you are, uh, you have an impressive resume. You've done some amazing things. If you could, just a little background about yourself, just so for those who are unfamiliar, they'll just know you a little better. Perfect. Uh, so I was Raised in Charleston, South Carolina, born in Montreal. Uh, that's quite a spread. That, that's yes. in the book. That's in the book. It will, it will take a journey to explain that. But I, I came up in a, in a musical family, the Morant family. My dad was a legendary trumpet player uh, and my mom a, a prodigal classical cellist. And so I, uh, we had a big family. I'm one of many brothers. We had a band together and I played drums and and. Then when I became a teenager, I basically decided that I was going to be the next prince. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, that didn't happen. But my <laughs> dreams of my dreams of, of making it in the big time as a record producer, songwriter, uh, you know, miraculously they came true in a major way. I ended up working with the Backstreet Boys, Justin Timberlake, Will Smith. Uh, I mean, the list is endless, and um, I spent a lot of time cultivating my musical craft as a producer and a songwriter. And then I came home to Charleston and I've been here uh, back home, settled for 20 years, just playing gigs. Like when I was a kid playing with my dad and it's been a joy. I'm a father to five children, Christian, as we mentioned earlier, Christian, uh, Mercy, Sophia, Savannah, and my youngest boy, Roman. Very nice. Yeah, your resume and, and people, I, you know, I have links in the show notes where they can learn more about everything and go check it out. It's pretty impressive. Uh, the folks you've worked with and not just like in passing, like really worked with these, you know, yeah. big names in the music industry. So maybe you didn't have quite the career of Prince, but it, it's still quite <laughs> impressive to say the um, least. <laughs> um, one day. No. Yeah. Hey, you never know. You never know. One day. Yeah. But now you've kind of, uh, you know, not that you're not still involved in music. I know you play around town periodically still, um, shows here and there. But you've also pivoted to add author um, to your long list of, you know, the hyphenates uh, that go before your name. <laughs> and your first book uh, came out not that long ago, and, and, and it did really well. It, it got onto a few lists and things like that. If you could, just let us know a little bit about that first book and some of the accolades you received. Well, it's it's pretty amazing because, first of all, out of all the things I've seen, all the incredible things I've done, places I've gone, people I've been with, one thing that was never in my purview, never there, I never saw it coming, was to write a book. It just was not, you know, I didn't see it happening. Mm. Fast forward, I wrote a book. It took uh, several years, uh, but I was motivated by several people who just said, I have to, you know, I'd post stuff on Facebook and people would be surprised at the things that I experienced. And then I thought about, you know, my kids and how, uh, you know, I, I wanted them to know my life because three of my children weren't born yet during my time in the music business. So I wrote the book, The Happy Has Been, a memoir of music and life in six degrees. Mm-hmm. And it came out in January, January 1. And it went, it shot up the charts on Amazon. It, it did like 10, in the end, it did 10 times uh, number one on different various charts. So. Uh, then, like you mentioned earlier, alluded to, uh, I won Best Author 
right here in my hometown, which is mm-hmm. a big deal to me because the truth is, I even though I was gone and I was traveling, doing my thing, and you know, it was it was a blessing, but I never really left Charleston. Charleston's been my home, and it's going to remain my home. So that that really was personal to me to uh, to be recognized by my hometown. So that's been doing yeah. well. It's still a baby, you know. It's still just getting going. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's impressive. Yeah, it just came out in January. It's still going, like you said. So, again, there'll be a link in the show notes. People can go ahead and and purchase that book. Um, And it kind of dives into, I mean, kind of basically your life in general. It's a memoir, you know, about growing up and some of the music industry things we were talking about. Um, and, and that's kind of the the focus of it as well as, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, just your your positivity, how to uh, yeah. make sure you're staying present and happy and, and facing challenges head on. So it's a, it's a memoir, but also kind of in a way like a, uh, a self-help book. Yeah, well, it's so funny because several people have give, given it that that kind of title. The, the thing is, it, it's called The Happy Has Been for a reason. It, it, I wanted to express my joy, but not just the book shares with you. And it isn't just me and the Backstreet Boys, let me tell you. It's me mm-hmm. and me sleeping in the Greyhound bus station with nothing. It's me trying to raise, frankly, I was a single dad with my eldest boy. Mm. And to to juggle and the conflict once I did arrive in the music industry, but also to remain that. Thank goodness I have my mom and dad, but still, I'm a present dad. It was a conflict and a struggle and a challenge and trying to, you know, weigh and give balance to what where do I put my priorities? So there's that and just wanting to encourage people that in any phase of your life, the the considered ups and downs, there can be a joy. And once you realize that you 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 lean into your happiness and everything is just just brighter for lack of a better <laughs> I'm a corny dude I'm I'm gonna admit it right <laughs> here but the truth is I want to bring that positivity because I think that's why I had those experiences to be honest you know at first you know when you go up you come down and the come down is not easy man mm. but if you have these experiences and can share them with others, somebody else can take it and run with it. Almost like uh, the, the baton, what do they call it? The, um, a relay the, race? Yes, a relay race. It isn't mm-hmm. just about me. And the minute I learned that, and it, you know, now I want to pass it out into the world and let people take off and let's go. So, uh, and it seems that it's accomplishing that so far. As I said, it's yeah. Amazon for people who don't know. It's not just like uh, one list. There's many no, different man. types of lists depending on categories yeah. and things. And you've hit number one um, at yeah. least for a week or however often they do it um, on yeah. several lists. So it shows that there's plenty of people who are interested in hearing that message. Yeah, it's resonating. I mean, the bizarre part is it. I'm I'm almost scared to say this. If Taylor's if Swifties are listening, or the Bay <laughs> the Bay Hive, or the Britneys, yeah. I <laughs> we were number one over these artists, these major artists, and then wow. we 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 put out the Audible, and it went number one even over the Beatles. So I'm wow. gonna run and hide somewhere because I, I feel like they're gonna come for me. But but the <laughs> truth is, the number one means so much to me in this way. It's awareness. This way I can spread this message of happiness and human connection. And, and, and someone somewhere, the ripple effect is real. Someone will get it, hopefully, like I got messages in my past, and mm. they run with it. It isn't about me, you know. That's the advantage of that. So I'm, I'm very thankful. Absolutely. And um, as we said, this is it's still a pretty new book. And yeah, obviously you enjoyed writing it so much that you decided to go for a second effort. <laughs> and uh, you've already mentioned in the podcast your role as a dad and, and the different uh, phases of your life, but you've always been yeah. present. And a lot, pretty much any time I get see any news about you, like a press release or something, it's always mentioning how that's an important part of your life is being a dad and how proud you are of that. So it's yeah. fitting that this next book uh, has a focus on one of your children, um, yes. this new book called Letters to My Son, Roman, and um, with the subtitle next to it, Love on the Spectrum. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. I haven't had a chance to read this book yet. Can you tell me what it's going to be about, what people can expect? Please. And, and if I get a little choked up, uh, don't mind me. I actually just came from a, uh early viewing of the movie Ezra, 
I don't know if you know what that is, but it's a, it's a major movie with major artists from Robert De Niro to, to Tony Goldwyn to Whoopi Goldberg. And it's literally, I mean, it mirrored my, so many parts of my life. It's a, it's a dad who has his own life and struggles, but is so devoted to his son that mm. he'll do whatever, you know, he just wants to see him. He wants him to be seen and heard in the ways that I want my son be seen and heard and his son is on the spectrum his son is autistic and uh man it's heart it's heart-wrenching but here's the thing so letters to my son roman love on the spectrum that's the book it's currently out actually so we'll talk about that oh fantastic the reason i um so i'm gonna be real frank here so i had been writing this book since before roman was born i didn't know he was gonna uh, be a nonverbal autistic child but I knew that I was going to love him. I was 50 years old when he was born. I had recently had a stroke. That's mm. in the that's in the other book. But, mm-hmm. but all of these things led me to want to begin a, a conversation, some type of dialogue with this sweet upcoming boy, just in case. I mean, you know, you have to... I'm no spring chicken anymore, although I, you know, when you see me, you might not think that. But <laughs> the, 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 the point is, I... You know, I knew I was going to love him deeply, and I wanted him to know it. Uh, and then we got the diagnosis that he was uh, going to be autistic and uh, and also nonverbal, to be honest. And they, they called it severe severe autism. And, you know, I don't know what that means, frankly. I, I, I'll state right here and right now, I'm calling on all clinical, scientific people in the space, in the autism space, join me in this because I'm just a guy who loves his son. But mm. for the book... The book I had been writing, and I planned to put it out maybe in a year's time. Uh, you know, with this, the success of the first book, you know, I was like, okay, good. One day we're going to have another book, maybe next year or the holidays at best. But then a very dear friend of mine, someone, a friend of both of ours, um, a couple named T- uh, Tony Roach. He's a DJ uh, from the Club Bullies, very popular DJ in South Carolina, a mm-hmm. DJ collective, and his wife. They lost their beautiful 18-month-old son just a few Mm. weeks ago. And I was at the funeral, and Tony gave this riveting, just incredible, through much tears and and just being shook up. He, you know, he he admonished us to put down all the mess and live now and and, and just gave the message that I believe in that, that sometimes you know, I espouse is that there, you know, there's no tomorrow. It's now. Mm. If you have something in your heart, let's go right now. Not that there isn't a tomorrow, t- uh, you know, in technical terms, but when you get there, it will still be now. <laughs> so right, the point right, is, right, right. So the point is do it now. And when I left there again, through all the tears and, and we all loved on each other and, and, you know, we, we you knew we gave love to uh, beautiful Tony and Megan and, the point was real to me that I need to not wait on this. The book was ready. I just was trying to be all strategic. I mean, sure, you know, sure. You know, about putting a book out. But, you know, st- strategy is not my strong suit. <laughs> I'm one of them guys <laughs> who just like, I'm going for it. When I was, uh, yeah, a single dad, I'm 22 years old. I know nothing about children. Give me this child. What's next? You know, I'm that guy. So uh, in my heart, I knew that I had to put it out. So I, I scrambled and made sure that I, had all the formatting, the technical parts ready, and I was, and I just put it out with no thought, no hope, just hope that people would see in this a love that is very strong, but also one that is shared, that you can share in a different form of communication. Basically, it's a compilation of my letters to him that I've been writing for six plus years. He's six years old now. Mm. And kind of with the understanding, and you'll watch the journey, because you could see the early ones where I didn't know that he was going to be diagnosed with autism. So I'll let you jump in. I, I can no, that was great. I, you know, and uh, yeah. it, it, number one, you can tell there's, even though the, obviously the, the through line between both books is you and your life. And although this is a different aspect of it than the last yeah. book, you still are weaving in those Uh, beliefs of yours of happiness and love and support for family and being present. So you're going to have overlap between the two books, despite there being uh, vastly different content in some respects, you know, one's more like your life and career, this one more 
specifically, like you said, your letters to your son. And you mentioned you'll see the progression. And, and I think, although in talking to you, and I'm sure with most parents, it was never in doubt that you were going to love all of your children, of course, no matter what diagnosis. But that still, I'm sure, was uh, shocking or um, maybe had you at least wondering, like, well, I'm obviously going to love my son, but what challenges are we going to have that maybe we didn't face before? Did, did anything like that enter your mind? Oh, man. I have to say, you know, here's the thing. <laughs> Being a veteran at the dad game that mm -hmm. I am, Mr. Mom, um, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm, I'm going to be honest. The thing that moved me and that kind of did, you know, take me aback is I thought about Roman's mom. Now, this is Roman's mom's very first and only child, her only son. And, you know, I, I don't know about anybody else, but my mom and me, that's my girl. Like mm -hmm. it gets no closer. I love my dad. My dad was the was the lion of the Morant clan, but my mom was my soul. Mm. So I thought about Roman's mom when all this came down, and I just wanted to kind of support her because I could not imagine the thought of her having her only son and not being able to say mom and talk to her. I mean, it's hard for me to speak about right now because. That's 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 a tough one. So yeah, I thought about sure. that. That's that's challenging emotionally. But but here's the thing too. Then Roman, he's a he's a person. So through all this, if you see Roman, that's why I share in here some pictures and and some experience I share on social media. Because when you see, when you not just see with your eyes, but when you experience this beautiful soul, you know that there is happiness, joy, and an understanding that that surpasses us mm. with him and other children who are on the spectrum. And since then, I've spent more time with other individuals, not only children, but particularly I have an affinity for children, obviously, as a parent. I mean, the, the, the brilliance, the spark, the creativity, the, the flat-out freedom, because let's just get this real. We're out here. We're putting on a show. This little yeah. boy and many like him, there's no show there. They just right. are who they are, and that's who they're going to be. And, man, I want that freedom. So I, I'm learning from him. That's a great point. No, that's a beautiful point, too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. just being themselves unapolog unapologetically. And yes. a, a lot of us would love to have that uh, bravery, honestly, to just yes. be ourselves 100%. So that's, a, that's an amazing point. I mean, when we were children, think about this. When we were kids, man, we were wide open. <laughs> we'd mm -hmm. do anything, much to our own demise sometimes, but sure. we would just, just be free to, to enjoy and, and you know, engage with each other. Again, you can, sp you can talk about cultural, cultural issues, racial issues, any of those issues. When you're a little child, they're not issues right. until we learn them. Well, sure. these, this little boy is not going to learn it. So in that respect, I, I want to learn from him. Yet there are, um, you know, there's the reason I jumped in here other than to express this in a loving manner is to begin the foundation in his name. So it would be called Romans World so that we can get some support and frankly, some funding and uh, just we want to help families because I know what this is. I'm mm. going to be honest here. Roman's mom was involved with um, with MUSC and had some other uh, his her family is, is, is a family in the medical world. So they were able to get him on this list for this mm. program that's a two-year waiting list. And, the, and I'm talking, th these are people who are affluent. You know, imagine the world out here of people on the spectrum, particularly children, who don't have access to these things. Right. And it takes funding. So I don't know much, and I'm going to call on all my people, but I have a big mouth, and I have a big microphone, <laughs> and the spotlight seems to be here. So... Uh, that's why I'm that's what I'm doing this for, to be honest. That's awesome. And uh, yeah. you know, we've been talking about this new book and it's already out. Uh, is yeah. the best place to get it Amazon or, or where is the best place for people listening? Like I want both books, actually. Where, where's the best way for Let's them go. to do that? OK, first, I have to say I'm going to announce it right here with you. All right. It's, it's actually the first announcement I, I, I said on social media. So letters to my son, Roman, love on the spectrum. We put it out on ebook and pre-order two weeks ago. And then it finally came out uh, about a week ago. It shot right to number one on awesome. two shows. Hold tight. The printed copies, both paperback and hardcover, came out Friday night, like midnight. So essentially Saturday. It has sat on number one 
since then. So wow. it's currently number one on Amazon on the um, number one new release. I, I believe it's in the child with disability, children with disabilities, and and another list. But the but again, my joy is in that the fact that it's resonating. Like there's something in the positivity, but also in the the content, especially when you're talking about the spectrum, that's mm-hmm. resonating with people. And yes, I would say go on Amazon. It can you can find it on my website as well, but. You know, Amazon, frankly, you know, they have the world at their feet and I want the whole world to get this message. So go on Amazon. It ain't about this particular books, unless you become the alchemist, you're not going to make no money off no books. So let's just get that straight. (laughs) But it's a platform and it'll allow us to uh, to have the foundation, give the foundation some light um, and get some people involved. Oh, and the happy has been still right there on Amazon, still kicking. We have a lot of uh, we have some events coming up. I'll share with you, Christian, as they come, so that we can inform the people. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. So this is this is the journey. I want to say one 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 thing. Sure. So, in terms of the the spread of autism, we everyone's been waking up to it. It's been here for for a while, but now it's it's become almost a bullet point, and I'm glad because we need the attention, but. My, my focus is on children in particular, and specifically in, in Roman's case, nonverbal children, which make up 20 to 30% of the entire autism community. That's a lot of folks. Yeah. There's millions of autistic people. So that's a lot of folks. So please understand that in all my joy, there's a mission. I don't want these kids particularly being given up on because there's no line of communication. Or they don't under, or we don't understand how to communicate. So that requires resources. It requires funding, frankly. So, you know, that's where I'm at with this. <laughs> yeah, and you know, for everyone listening, links, as I mentioned a couple times, will be in the show notes for the books and um, you know, re- regular website and stuff like that. But as uh, things are announced, as you said, whether it's events or if the foundation ho- ends up hosting anything or is taking donations, I'll be sure to share on yes. Holy City Center so everybody can keep an eye on that. And, you know, we'll, we'll be sure, you know, so when people leave here today, they might go grab those books, but we'll keep them up to date on everything that happens in the future as well. Um, Thank you, Christian. I, I oh, appreciate you. And listen, man, hey, I, I, I never liked it. I don't want it to be a, a dark cloud on anybody. I promise you, when you read this particular book, you will be left with happiness. You might shed a few tears because I did writing it, but it is a joyful experience. This community is here. To, the, I, I believe that this community, the, the autistic community, will bring us joy. We think we're going to help them. And there are, there are things that need to be done from a finance standpoint, but we're going to be the ones that receive the gift. I can promise you in the six plus years with my boy, it has been pure bliss. That's amazing to hear. And yeah, as you said, the books, although there may be some darker moments or mentions, as you said, they all focus or they both focus on positivity, happiness, being present in the moment. And when bad things happen or unexpected things, you know, how you can kind of flip the switch and and turn it into a positive and and keep things moving. So, yeah, definitely uh, are uplifting books that people should check out. And um before I let you go, is there anything I didn't ask or we didn't talk about that you want to mention, whether it's other projects or anything related to this too? I would say, uh, I think we covered everything. I just want to, again, encourage everybody. First, Holy City Holy City Center. Stay <laughs> right here for all your local and, in this case, global information. I appreciate you, Christian. You've been in the game and doing it wonderfully. And, and, and you know, I feel like uh, I've been out here for a while, but, man, I'm brand new with this. And it's a beautiful feeling to be, I'm 56 years old, but I'm 56 years young. Trust me. There you me. go. Let's and go. I, I appreciate so that, the kind words. And, you know, yeah. since we first connected several years ago, like I said, we may go a while without connecting about something that's going on, but you've always been super nice, positive and supportive. Thank so you. I really appreciate you as well. And yes. so happy for your newest success. You've had plenty, <laughs> but even this, you know, we got more stuff happening. So, and I really appreciate you coming on to chat with me today. Thank you, Christian. And anytime, uh, I'll be back with more. There are definitely more projects in the pipeline. I promise you that. All right. We'll definitely keep everyone posted on those. Uh, Thanks again. And uh, I really appreciate it. 
And that'll do it for this edition of Holy City Center Radio. A big thank you to Jonathan Mookie Morant for stopping by. So glad I could have him on the show today. Great guy, amazing story. Um, and I encourage you all to go pick up both of his books, if not just one. <laughs> um, but uh, both are really, uh, really good. I haven't read the second yet, but just based on what he was saying, uh, I, it sounds like it's going to be a, a really good release. And uh, yes, I encourage everyone to support him and his mission. And like I said in the interview, uh, I'll be sure to pass along more information as his journey continues. So thanks so much for listening. Thank you to Lindsay Marie Collins with LMC Sound System for producing this and every episode of Holy City Center Radio. And thank you to Tyler Boone, whose music you hear in each and every show. I'll be back with you on Friday. Uh, We'll get you caught up on the latest news, including um, election results. The primary was held on Tuesday. As of this recording, the polls are still open. So obviously I have no idea, at least officially in some races, who's going to win. So I'll be sure to give you a little bit of a roundup on that as well. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast, like it and review it, rate it, whatever you can do to help it out. Uh, I really appreciate it. So back on Friday, but until then, you know the routine. Good night and good luck.